Hi guys, how are you doing? It's me, Dasha Jamison. I hope you can hear me and see me okay. And uh, today uh, we're gonna have our friend uh, Otto and we're gonna do gallery walkthrough and visit his studio. As you can see, Otto is amazing artist, so we so lucky to have him. Okay, does that work? Very, yeah, it's perfect. And uh, how are you doing today? Good, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're we're a little, uh, we're a little, we're itchy to get out there and do some stuff. But at least I've had plenty of time to get in here and and, and work on my on my. So you know. They take long enough as it is, but thank you for having me. You've been doing some excellent work with pastel with the Red Rock Pastel Society. Congratulate you on that, and and, and uh, wonderful, wonderful show. Some excellent pieces. Uh, thank you, Arta. It's uh, so nice to hear it. And uh, let me reintroduce myself. I'm Dasha Jameson with Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada, and we have Arta Turk. Uh, with uh, Pastel Society of Southern California, an amazing artist. And last time I saw you, it was a uh, painting uh, in Pastel Society of Southern California. I remember you put on Sweet, Ho uh, Sweet Caroline and we just had fun there. So thank you for inviting me to your studio. No, no problem, no problem. Thank you. Thank you for coming by and thank you for being part of our society. I'm so glad you started your the Red Rock Pastel Society, and, and uh, looks like you guys are really taking off. Uh, we are trying, and uh, you're definitely an inspiration. So, uh, <laughs> behind you is a piece what you're working on right now. Yeah, Can you please yeah. tell about it? Yeah, this piece is, uh, is called Camellias, and, and I've been, believe it or not, I've been working on this for like two years now. It's been off and on because I've been working on a lot of different mural projects. I've been doing so. I've been working with the Disney, and so it's, it's been an off and on relationship with this painting, but I'm really looking forward to getting it done now. This is on UART, uh, UART 800 uh, Mount Deeper, so um, yeah, it's an 18 by 24. It, is it uh, obviously UART Black? Do you like UART Black uh, for any reason better for your style? Uh, no, this is actually not black. This is actually the traditional uh, oh. color. And, oh. Yeah. But that black, that black is, is actually the Jero black, excuse me, the Jero blacks, the 513 and the 526, which I absolutely love. So uh, those, those blacks are probably my favorites, and, uh, and they work really well to try to get this dark, smooth, smooth kind of velvety back. I have that uh, picture of Jero set that uh, you guys created together. So uh, the pastel stick you mentioned, like in that set from Giraud? That's right. Uh, uh, I worked with uh, Michelle Athen, who's the representative here uh, in the States, and um, we came up with uh, the, the Otto Sturk Dark 25 pastels. Um, they're my favorite darks of um, their series, a lot of dark pastels. Um, it, we just thought uh, it'd be nice to, to put that together. Oh, that's, that's really cool. And I saw you have like a really nice studio set up. Can you show us around? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really that. But, uh, but what I do is this is this here, what you see behind me, actually my drawing table. And uh, it's, it's spring loaded. So I'm, which, what I really like is that you're able to put it up at a 90 degree angle because that's the way I really like to work at a 90 degree angle so that when I'm working, the dust is falling into this uh, interview, which I'll show you. Okay, I'll try to move slowly. Okay. That's actually a rain gutter, uh, what you see there. And so that uh, that's where it falls and then I collect it and reconstitute it to you past it. So this is this is my o this is my O C D palette. This is my full set of Jarrows and you can see that I even have um, you know swatches in between there. So there's the swatches there and with the numbers. Yeah, that's that's I like to leave that set as it is, and I typically use these um, you know, the, the tips. I don't do any side strokes with these typically. Um, but over here, I have my helmet box and oh, let me see if I can show you my helmet box. And that's where I have uh, my pastels set up in values and, and, and uh, oh my gosh. So, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty much about it. 
Um, uh, over there, I have my mirror, so I can see what's going on, if there's anything wrong with my, with my painting. And over here, I just have my workstation, uh, computer, and everything else. So, you know, that's pretty much about it. So it's nothing Yeah, nothing, yeah, like nothing special there. Nothing, know, nothing fancy, but I'm gonna see if I can put this back on the stand without it falling on us, all right? Let me see, all right. I need to get a bed. All right, let's see if that works. Hold on, give a quick second. Sorry about that. Let's see if it falls onto it. All right, there we go. All right, we're good. Getting back into the picture. Here we go. Uh, so, so yeah. So that's that's pretty much what I have. Uh, to the left of me, I have east light, and right behind the uh, table is north light. So I'm able to move things. Everything's on wheels, so I'm able to move everything around the way I needed to. Uh, so I can when I'm working um, uh, from a photo reference, obviously, uh, since the the flowers don't know up in such a way where I can roll things around and and set my space uh, to suit what I need. At the, um, I have bed painting, what I brought up on the screen, and you share a very special story. I guess you created it in 2012, and it's when you uh, went to PSA. Can you tell more about it? Uh, yeah, this, well, this one, um, this piece is, is called, it's titled El Musico, and that is my son, my, my eldest son. He's, he's eight now, but he was there. He was just shy of two years old. And so uh, I posed him, obviously I used a photo reference, but uh, I posed him to, because uh, my wife is, uh, was uh, uh, the lead of an all-female mariachi. Um, and so uh, she, you know, and, and I thought as a tribute to her and, and she plays the violin. And, uh, and so I wanted to do a piece that, that shared that love of culture, love of music. Um, and, you know, I think it was interesting the way uh, when I gave him that little guitar, the way he held it, and, and it was almost like a, you know, it, 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 it just, it, you know, the way he held it, was, it felt like there was a lot of, a lot of real in there, and uh, um, so uh, that, that piece is an 18 by 24, it was uh, painted on a prime panel, and uh, it was, uh, actually this piece went to the Fisher Museum, um, my, my, this one did not go to, uh, to P Pesto Society of America, uh, but uh, the, the one that did was Tales Terracotta, and that was back in 2012. And that was the first time I entered a piece in a show, and um, I, I, uh, I ended up winning an award for Tales Terracotta. And, and that was kind of my, my entry into the, the pastel world, because it was unfamiliar to me prior to that. Wow. Uh, how did you start it with uh, pastel? How did you come up to pastel painters? Well, you know, um, I've, I've been an illustrator for uh, over 20 years now, and so uh, in our work, um, sometimes you have to try to style when you're working in it, and you, you, you tend to, now this is prior to um, the advent of computers, a lot of traditional art was being used in concept work, and so I started dabbling with pastels, but I never really, you know, really did any uh, real painting with it it was uh, I, I, uh, I used it uh, more mixed media than anything else and it was more for concept work um, and then uh, I finally decided to take a, uh, a pastel workshop with Diana Ponting who's from Canada uh, wonderful wonderful art, art it was sold out and, and, and I just didn't think I was gonna get in I was on the wedding list I ended up getting in and um, I never looked back she was a wonderful teacher and I really got inspired um, and, and so now that's my main medium, my, my, my go-to is pastel. And obviously okay. you achieve uh, yeah. quite a yeah. success there. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of my paintings, and, um, or most of my paintings, have some sort of symbolism to them. And, and that's because I yeah. am really attracted to the Dutch painters. Um, I, I like, I like uh, symbolism, I like our and and, um, and when I was young, I was I would listen to Sister Wendy. Sister Wendy was like the know-all when it came to, uh, to, to art, and, and she she was just a, uh, an encyclopedia of information. And she would, you know, stand in a museum like the Norton Simon, and she would talk about a piece that the guy had painted. And it, she just had so much knowledge, and it seemed like she just knew these artists. Per didn't, but it's such a, such a, a, a knowledge of. Their technique and, and their life 
um, that it was really inspiring. And I thought, you know, I wanted to, to put some, of, some narrative into my work. And so usually I have a title prior to the painting. And so I stick to that narrative uh, when I'm painting. And, and, and so I do have some symbolism in there and, and uh, some have a lot more than others. So, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. I remember just recently you finished that piece and uh, I know I'm kind of uh, covering part of it, yes. uh, but you mentioned what this one have a lot of symbolism in it. So yeah, I, is, was I was this, curious. This is Night of the Sugar Moon. Um, this, the Night of the Sugar Moon, uh, we live in the North, Northern Hemisphere and, and the, the Sugar Moon is typically um, after winter and, and when everything begins to thaw. This is when the maple trees start uh, releasing their, their sap. And so this is where we get our maple syrup. Um, and, and that is called the sugar moon. Now we see there that green jug, it's called a, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's typically where, you know, we store your maple syrup. Uh, but uh, the sugar moon, during the time we got orders to stay at home. And so for me, the moon has yeah. always been comforting um, and, and uh, has always been comforting, calming, and, and there is more symbolism in there, but it's, it's you know, I'll, I'll leave it to the viewer to, to, uh, to kind of yeah. pick up the narrative. But, but thank you for sharing this, and I remember oh. that sugar moon, and uh, I stared at it a little bit more than I would usually stare, just because it was right outside of the window, and there is no place to go, so... Uh, you notice more That's things true. around you. It was a very yeah. huge moon. It was, I mean, it was quite dramatic. Close, it was really bright. And, and so, uh, so this, this, uh, I was inspired by that moon. And, and, and that's when this, uh, you know, this is when, when this painting came about. So there's, there's the actual oh, piece. Oh my gosh, we got picture. In, <laughs> yeah, picture and picture. <laughs> so, uh, I have... <laughs> Like you mentioned what you uh, work for Disney, but this is something amazing you've done recently. You worked as an art yeah. director on a set uh, of uh, Galaxy Edge. Can you tell about that, please? Yes, no, we're, we, we, I work with a group called Mural Makers, and Mural Makers are, uh, assist uh, Walt Disney Imagineers in creating the worlds that are inside the park. So um, we're, we're assistant field art directors to Walt Disney Imagineering. And so uh, we worked on Star Wars for quite a few months. It was almost a year. And we worked on, on a lot of different other projects. We've got some stuff coming up. We've got one project on hold right now due to the pandemic. Uh, but, uh, but it was an amazing, amazing experience to work on this because um, I saw the, the first Star Wars movie that came out back uh, in 19, I believe it was 1976, uh, 77. Um, uh, and, and I just loved Star Wars. And when we were fortunate, because there's eight kids, we were fortunate enough to go to Disneyland uh, in the 70s, uh, I was just enthralled by the work, the craftsmanship, everything, the architecture, everything that those artists uh, put into uh, every corner of those parks. And so, you know, I was just amazed by it, and who would have thought, you know, decades later I'd be working uh, on, in, in uh, hands-on in these parts. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience, and uh, it's, it's my other job. <laughs> it's a really, really cool uh, place, and, and, and I mean, I, you have to be there to experience it, obviously, you know. I want to move on on our second part of interview. Yeah. And it is, and it is our gallery walk. Uh, you selected a few paintings from our exhibition, and uh, you're gonna talk about them today. So uh, uh, thank you for visiting, and uh, let me bring up those paintings. What you selected? It is by Christine Obers, and it's called Gracie. Yeah, I, you know, Christine's work is absolutely beautiful, and and you know, the 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 gesture, the the feeling she gives, the emotion she gives to that she paints is is really remarkable. Um, I, I just, I mean, it doesn't feel plastic whatsoever. The sheen on that 
coat is absolutely beautiful. Um, and, and, and the look on, on the, the, the horse's, uh, the horse's face is just gorgeous. And, and you know, the, the, the yeah, subtle shifts in, uh, the coat too is, I absolutely love. So she did a wonderful piece, uh, creating this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the title again was Gracie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So hats off to, to her. She does really wonderful work. And again, I mean, I, I'm a, I, I do representational art. I love realism, um, but that's not all I like. And, uh, but, you know, and that's not like all I like paint as well, but you know, I, I, I do, I do enjoy these, these pieces. I mean, she's, she's just really, really a wonderfully, uh, wonderfully talented artist. So I, I congratulate her on this piece. Uh, I cannot agree more with you. And uh, she has, uh another few pieces in our online gallery so link in bio uh guys if you haven't seen the show yet please take a look there are a few more pieces by christine there and next painting by our friend linda yeah linda linda's piece um uh, last night in the hemis is just it's just i love the contrast of this piece you know and then here's the thing she 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 doesn't give a whole lot of information um, in in the greens, and then you have this wonderful uh, uh, dark shape on the left hand side, which gives even more contrast and form to uh, to the main actor in this piece, and that is the the hill, uh, the the, uh, the cliff back there uh, being hit by uh, by that that gorgeous light, and then. It, and then she's got this beautiful sky that contrasts again. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful piece. It's not easy to do greens, at least in my opinion. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so Never she, is. she handles it really well. You know, I got to meet uh, Linda uh, at the Pathless Society of the West Coast years ago. And her personality is a lot like her paintings. They're just inviting, uh, they're warm. And it's just, it's just, her, her, I mean, she's as beautiful as, the, as as a piece that she, she creates. So it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. And uh, I'm, I'm, you know, frankly, I'm, all her pieces are, are just, uh, just outstanding. So, you know, if you don't know Linda Moody, you should. Those are wonderful, wonderful pieces. Yeah, thank you, Arthur. And I had the chance to meet Linda at uh, Pastel Society in California. So I drove from Las Vegas and there was demo by Linda and also your uh, demonstration. So I was able, right. like I, I were on the waiting list and I were able to get in and I had a chance to paint with you in Santa Barbara later, like just amazing times and uh, gorgeous pieces. Uh, there are three of them in our show, please take a look. And just a reminder, you can press hard. So if you open um, any painting on your screen or on your phone, you can open the painting and press hard. And at the end of the month, we're selecting a uh, viewer's choice. So there are one more award to be given. Uh, are you ready for the next piece? Yes, absolutely. Ah. Valeria yes, Kulikova yes, yes. in uh, uh, captivity yes. two. In captivity two, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I love... Uh, the composition here. I mean, it draws you in. Look at the atmosphere. I mean, it's just it's 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 just gorgeous light. Um, you know, it, it, it the the sky in the back, the the that that warm haze. It's just really really beautiful. I I really like uh, the greens and the water, but but all in all, it, it's just I feel like I'm I'm standing there about to board one of these. Uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm losing the the, uh, the name. These uh, oh, what do they call them? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm so bad. Uh, but anyhow, these 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 uh, these boats I, are just. I mean, everything is just wonderful about it. I feel like I'm there, and I think she did a great job on the uh, on the atmosphere. And you have these beautiful contrasting shapes uh, in, in the foreground. And you have that that hazy light in the back. She just just a really really nice uh, piece, and and, uh, and and the control the the, the thing about you know it, sometimes it's difficult to control 
um, white, right? Or, or pastels with that have white in them. Um, because sometimes, all too often, um, a beginning artists mistake um, uh, bright uh, for for white. And so sometimes they can get a little pasty, but she does wonderful, she did a really, really wonderful job of, of uh, controlling those lighter values. So, and, and giving us that, that sense of atmosphere. So a wonderful, wonderful job by, uh, is it Valeria? Valeria, yeah, yeah. Valeria. Yeah. When I try to so, read it in an English yeah. manner, I mispronounce it. So Valeria Kulikova, yeah, wonderful uh, written yeah. artist. She had uh, several, several pieces in our show. Thank you, Otto. Uh, and we're moving no to, to your next selected piece, what uh, caught your eye. And it's Cindy. Yes. Gillet, no. cast iron and wool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I love Cindy's work. Now, am I pronouncing her name correct? Is it Gillet? Did you say it was Gillet? Is it? Uh, it's a uh, Gillet. Uh, everything is Gillette? reading Gillet. Okay, so, yeah, okay. yeah okay. Gillet. So, all right. Well, I believe, I I believe just... so. So she haven't corrected me prior. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a really, really outstanding piece. It's of uh, create, I mean, she's just, I love the way she creates these solid forms. But on top of that, that, that color contrast is just gorgeous. And the, the way she handles, you know, I saw a video of her handling those uh, pastels and creating that weave on that blanket. And I was just, I was, I was astounded by it. I was like, <laughs> I have trouble holding those, those pieces of pastel trying to create that detail. It's just, she just did, did a wonderful job of, of that, that cast iron, um, uh, pot and so you know it, it it's it's not from at least for me too i mean having done uh you know uh, still eyes with steel anything with steel or metal she just she does she, she does a wonderful job controlling um her values and the color and everything else so it's a beautiful beautiful contrasting piece and and that again that we work on that on that blanket is just absolutely gorgeous so she did a wonderful job on that and i know there was a uh, Another piece uh, that that she uh, got an award for that is to this. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. She did right? it. The right. yeah. shadow is a in our square format uh, painting, and what I love about it, like cast iron, uh, feels heavy. Like you can feel the weight yeah. of it. So yeah. that's yeah, like that that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can feel the weight. So uh, wonderful pieces by Cindy, a wonderful artist. So. Lucky to have her uh, in our society for the second year in a row. Yeah, well, she's she's outstanding. So I, I congratulate her on her on her work, and uh, I, I uh, hopefully we we'll get to meet everybody uh, next year. Hopefully at, at IAPS. So yeah, ho yeah, hopefully we will. And we have the last piece here. Yeah. What uh, caught your eye? Yeah. And it's uh, by. Julia Dubinina and his uh, daughter. Yeah, I, I, I saw uh, Julia's work, um, and she just has a, a really her the touch. She's got she does some wonderful work. This piece is just gorgeous. The expression on the little girl's face, um, the way she's uh, caressing that that's that teddy bear. You know, it, it's it's gorgeous. I mean, she knows she knows light. She knows form and uh, and you know, it's 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 yes, it's a technical piece, but I mean, it 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 also has this this beautiful soft light that just is really inviting, and um, I think she did a wonderful, wonderful uh, job on on uh, creating this, this this figure. It's just, I think she did you know, and I, I've seen some where she does. Um, uh, she does. Uh, what was it? Her, the, I think the recent one that I just saw. I think it was one a dog, or I'm trying to remember what it was exactly. But um, but she she just just does some really wonderful work, and um, and, and this she does piece, a lot of animal so painting that, and uh, realism. Yes, the realism. Yeah, she does really really great work. So uh, very 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 talented, and uh, I, I'm I'm curious as to uh, what. Uh, what uh, paper she used on this one, but uh, yeah, she just controls it, controls the pastel really, really well. 
So I congratulate her. Thank you, Atta. And uh, thank you for walking our show with you. But always like no, when one show... When one show ends, uh, artists start to think, uh, like, what is next? And I know you guys working on something, what is next? That's right, that's right. Well, just like you, we're always up to something, right? So, you know, we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to get, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're letting people know how, how, how exciting and how versatile this pastel medium is. And so we are having our Make Your Mark uh, uh, international online open jury show. This is our second annual, and so it is. It is uh, it just opened up yesterday, so this is a call for entries. If anyone would like to uh, participate, you can go out to online jury shows, or you can go out to our new website, which is still under construction, but it's it's coming along nicely. It's at pscwebsite.org. Uh, you can get all the information. You can download a PDF of the prospectus. You can also get it at OGS, which is online jury shows. All the information is there. Uh, we're also on Instagram, Pastel Society of Southern California, if you'd like to get more info. Um, but, uh, but we would love to have you guys participate, and um, the deadline is July 22nd. So you have a little under two months to get your work together and, uh, and, and, and make your mark. So this, again, this is open. This is not, this is not for members only. And, so you don't have to be a member. You can enter, no, not, like, just if you, you, if you want, you can. Okay. Yes, yes, don't, no, no, no need. Yeah, this is open, this is an open jury show. So, so you don't have to have membership. If you are, obviously you get a, a, a discount, a $10 discount on your entry. So it would be $30 for the first two entries versus $40 for the first two entries. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, so uh, our international jurors, by the way, our international jurors are Diana Ponting, who I took up in my first workshop with. From Canada, uh, yes. That's right. Uh, we have Isabel, who you just interviewed, Isabel Lynn. Yes. Uh, yeah, from Hong Kong, and so uh, she is also one of our jurors. And we have uh, Neil O'Neill from France, so he will be uh, uh, one of our jurors as well. And our awards judge is none other than Lorenzo Chavez, uh, whose work I'm sure you're familiar with, and just a wonderful, outstanding artist. And so we're, we're lucky to have them be part of this open exhibition. Uh, so we're really looking forward to it. I mean, if, if we have anything uh, like the pieces that were in your show, uh, we're going to be ecstatic. So uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm looking forward to it. We had a really great turnout for our first uh, Make Your Mark show last year, and we're looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, it will be a wonderful show. I hope uh, everybody get more time to paint during this time. And... Uh, have uh, beautiful pieces to submit and the uh, deadline is July 22nd so uh, there is still some time you know so uh, you can start now and uh, yeah. uh, we are still uh, we still competing for the viewers choice award <laughs> at our show so uh, right. yeah right. I just posted leaders we have a few leaders there and uh, there is Still, like you still have till the end of the month uh, to change it. So tell everybody what show is up. Please press your heart to go watch our show, and uh, you can win viewers' choice prize. Um, that's that's something what we've done for our members, and we got an idea from you. That was wonderful. Like it's in that's uh, amazing thing about society is what you can learn from each other. That's correct. That's correct. I think I think one thing that my first IAPS, which was last year, um, that camaraderie that comes from all the pastel societies was um, was really exceptional. Uh, I, we got to learn a lot of things, and um, and so there's there's a lot of people who are willing to help, and it's so nice to be able to work with uh, you know we, I guess we'll consider you our sister pastel society, uh, yes. and uh, but it, it's 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 really amazing to to be able to collaborate in that matter. So uh, thank you once again for inspiring us because you're doing some work, uh, amazing work on, on social media. And so that's something we, we definitely lack in and, and we're going to uh, shoot to, to get some more work out there uh, via social media. But, um, so yeah, there's always something to learn. So we're looking forward to, yes. to uh, growing Absolutely. And, and, and remaining creative and inspired. 
Thank you Otto, so much. It was so nice uh, having you for our two-part interview and uh, gallery walkthrough. I do, uh, do my best to save both of them on Instagram TV, so you will be able to watch it if you missed it live. Uh, thank you for being with us. Dasha Jamison with Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada, Otto Stirk with uh, Pastel Society of San Francisco, California. All right, Dasha. Thank you so much for inviting me, and, and uh, good luck with everything. So congratulations on your thank show. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Talk to you soon, and I hope to see you sometime soon, too. Uh, okay.